the mechanisms of alpha substitution reactions. And we've really got two classes of mechanisms. We've got those that are base catalyzed and those that are acid catalyzed. And I said base catalyzed, but we'll learn that some of them are actually base promoted. And we'll find out that the uh, it actually consumes an equivalent of base. The base doesn't get regenerated. Uh, it gets consumed in the reaction. So we really couldn't call it a catalyst in that case, as a catalyst doesn't get consumed in a reaction. So, uh, but we'll see some that are base catalyzed, some that are base promoted, and then we'll see acid catalyzed as well. So, but whether it's base catalyzed or base promoted, the mechanism is going to largely work out the same. So I'll just combine them into one general mechanism here. Now this lesson's part of my organic chemistry playlist. I'm releasing these lessons weekly throughout the school year. So if you want to be notified every time I post a new lesson, subscribe to the channel, click the bell notification. All right, so we're going to start with that base catalyzed slash base promoted mechanism. And again, big thing I said at the end of the last lesson that I want you to take home here is that anytime you see a base catalyzed or base promoted lesson, your enolate is your nucleophile. Anytime you see an acid catalyzed mechanism in this chapter for alpha substitution, an enol is your nucleophile. Those are your two options. That's it. So just keep that in mind here. So if we take a look first at this base catalyzed mechanism, so first you're just going to deprotonate an alpha hydrogen. And in this case, we're just going to come in here and deprotonate that hydrogen so and form our enolate. Let's draw that a little cleaner. All right, so there's our enolate there. So an enolate's having a negative charge are rather strong nucleophiles. Keep that in mind. I'm going to draw in some lone pairs as they're relevant. And also one thing to keep in mind is that the second resonance contributor is the major resonance contributor. And that's important because if we're, if we're looking at the mechanism, when you're doing all the arrow pushing for a mechanism, you really should use the major resonance contributor when you're doing the arrow pushing, not the minor. Although if we use the minor, you'll find out this would be a lot easier to see. So as we go from here, so, but that's your strong nucleophile. And so here, you're just gonna have some sort of electrophile in your solution. So it doesn't have to necessarily be positively charged, but I'll just put E positive there. Uh, and in this case, it'd be a lot easier to see if we could use this guy. So if we kind of take a look at what's going on here, if we did use this guy to do the arrow pushing, we'd just see we're attaching an electrophile to the alpha carbon and life would be so good. And we'd see, oh yeah, I can just see that there's now going to be an electrophile attached to that alpha carbon and voila, no big deal. So, but it's not actually the arrow pushing that we should be doing. So in this case, rather than coming from the alpha carbon itself, the proper arrow pushing should be worked off the major resonance contributor. And you're going to have these electrons from oxygen drop down to form a pi bond, allowing these, the pi electrons, to come and make a bond to the electrophile. And it leads us to, to exactly the same place. We're going to have this electrophile bonded to this alpha carbon right here and get there. But this is the proper arrow pushing. Now, the truth is this. If I'm drawing a mechanism, yeah, I work this. However, if I'm predicting products, I use this all day long when I'm trying to predict products because it's just easier to be like, oh, yeah, I'm going to attach something to my nucleophilic carbon atom right there at the alpha carbon. Now, we'll find out that if your base gets consumed in this step, it actually ends up being what's called base promoted. But if your base ends up getting regenerated along the way, and, and it does for certain reactions, we'd then call it base catalyzed. So, but as far as this part of it, it would look exactly the same either way. All right, so acid catalyzed is the next mechanism. And, uh, Acid catalyzed mechanisms, if you haven't figured this out, are way less fun <laughs> to do the arrow pushing for than uh, the base catalyzed ones. And that's going to hold true in this chapter as well. So uh, in this case, the first step, and I told you I was going to take this for granted, but this first step is simply going to be tautomerization. So and this lovely ketone in this case is going to tautomerize to the corresponding enol. Now, I put an R group here, and you got to be careful here, because the truth is, if I'm doing this in acid, if there was an option of doing a more substituted one on this side, then we'd preferentially form that enol. Well, in this case, just imagine that whatever the alpha carbon is on this side doesn't have any hydrogen. It's, it's quaternary or something like that. So keep that in mind. I'm just kind of simplify the waters here. So, all right, so we're going to form this lovely enol here, and he is our nucleophile. So... And in this case, the arrow pushing is going to look remarkably the same as what we see here. We're just going to have an extra step at the end. And so in this case, we're also going to put an electrophile in that solution. Doesn't also, also doesn't necessarily have to have that positive charge. And 
Uh, we're going to push electrons from the oxygen to form a pi bond, and then the pi bond is going to come and bond to that electrophile at the alpha carbon. Cool, and we'll now have that electrophile bonded at the alpha carbon, but our oxygen is still bonded to this hydrogen, and so you've got one last step here to deprotonate. And here I'm gonna get lazy and just write minus H plus. So you lose H plus, deprotonation. So, cause I don't really have what the base is, but a base would just come in and grab this. And it's typically whatever the conjugate base of whatever acid you're using is. So if you're doing this in aqueous solution, then you have H3O plus and water probably being the corresponding acids of bases. So just keep that in mind. But this is your general acid catalyzed mechanism. And I'm gonna say it one more time. If you're doing a base catalyzed or base promoted mechanism, an enolate is your nucleophile. If you're doing an acid catalyzed mechanism, an enol is your uh, nucleophile instead. Super important. Now, if you found this lesson helpful, would you consider giving me a like and a share? Best thing you can do to make sure that other students get to see this lesson as well. If you are looking for practice problems, if you're looking for the study guides that go with this lesson, check out my premium course on chadsprep.com.